Hey everyone, this is Sean Manaher here with RJ Adams uh, with the Author Hangout. Uh, it's good to have uh, today as our special guest Martin Crosby. He's the writer of My Temporary Life. Uh, he's also the writer of something you may have uh, heard before, How I Sold 30,000 eBooks on Amazon's Kindle. Martin, it's good to have you on the show today. Thanks very much for having me, Sean. It's good to be here. Excellent. Well, we're, we're going to jump right in. Martin, uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey as an author. Well, I, I, I wrote my first book three years ago and uh, tried the, the traditional route of uh, querying agents and querying publishers, and, and I couldn't get my book published. That was my first novel, My Temporary Life. And uh, at the same time, I was uh, investigating self-publishing uh, through that wonderful online encyclopedia that we all utilize, Facebook. And I was connecting with uh, self-published authors and, and, and some traditionally published authors too. And, and I realized there was a, a, a revolution going on. There were, there were uh, authors managing to connect with readers uh, by publishing their own work. So I started investigating self-publishing and, and I released my first book. Uh, my, my timing was, was excellent. That was at the end of 2011. Um, when I first released, I, I sold a, a couple hundred copies, and and I was happy with that. But there were a lot of authors who were were doing far better than I was, and I started contacting them and asking questions, and and uh, I'd purchase their book and and have a look at what they were doing, and and I'd say, you know, I I think I have a pretty good book. It's it's gone through a, a beta reader process where readers have come back and and told me they like it and and want more, uh, but I just can't connect with enough readers. Um, so in, in the spirit of, of paying it forward, uh, I had a lot of help. I had, I had a lot of uh, self-published authors answer my emails and, and help me out. And I made a number of changes to my, my product. My, but fortunately, my content was, was pretty good. I, I didn't really have to do much to that. But I changed my product presentation, and I changed the way that I was trying to connect with readers, too. And uh, due to the... the my timing, uh, things went really, really well for me. I jumped on board KDP Select, which, as you guys know, is an Amazon program, and uh, it was the right time. It was early 2012 when I did that, and I managed to connect with a lot of readers. Uh, so from there, I, I released uh, four more books. I, I have three other, uh, two other novels, a collection of short stories, and, and then I became the reluctant writer of a, a self-publishing guidebook. I I was uh, visiting a number of different uh, self-publishing fairs and writers' festivals, and, and I didn't like all the information that was being given out. I didn't like the fact that authors were being charged for services that they could really do by themselves. Uh, so I wrote a book, and I, I talked about my journey, and, and that's my self-publishing guidebook. And now I'm just having tons of fun talking to guys like you and writing and, and awesome. uh, connecting with readers every day. That's great, Martin. And what ultimately like made you want to be a writer? Was it something that you said, you know, I've always wanted to write, and so I'm going to start writing? You know, I I I, oh, I was the guy in in high school and probably even elementary school. Well, for sure, elementary school who wrote stories, and uh, and I liked having my stories read in class, and and I always had this this urge to write. Then life kind of got in the way, and I, I verged off into a career that really had nothing to do with writing. Um, I, I got into sales and marketing, and and I've taught taught salespeople and sold product my my whole professional life. But I always had a little voice uh, uh, saying, you know, maybe one day you could write a book. And when I when I hit my early 40s, I decided to start doing some things that that I hadn't been doing, and and. Uh, I took some writing classes and uh, learned more about writing, and I managed to put a novel together. So I, I think as a writer, it's always there. You know, you can ignore it. You can ignore it for a long time, but if you're a writer, it's always going to be inside you somewhere. That's ex that's awesome. Now, uh, talking about writing, you wrote a blog post uh, com called "Comparing Free and Discounted Promotions," where you talked a lot about free promotions uh, through through Kindle and, and other platforms. Now. Why is it that authors hate the idea of free promotions? Um, you'd have to ask them. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, I, I can tell you that uh, 
yeah, there, you know, we'll always have that conversation. As long as, as we have the ability to give away our work for free, yeah, we'll always have the conversation whether it's, it's advantageous to do it or not. As, as I said, I, I got on the KDP Select gravy train at the right time, and I gave away my book at a time when Amazon was awarding uh, uh, more credits for free downloads uh, than they are now. So I gave away 50,000 copies and, and my book got to number one on the free charts, which a lot of authors have done. And uh, when it be went back to paid, I, I sold a lot of books and connected with a lot of readers. So I, I'm a real believer in free. Now having said that, uh, in that blog post I mentioned that Free kind of stopped working for me. It was still a little bit effective, but not as effective as it had been. So I started doing different things in order to connect with readers. Um, so I didn't run a free promotion for over a year. I recently did another one, and I was actually pleasantly surprised by the results. The results were very good. I have a couple of books in a series. So of course, the second book in the series did very well when, when I gave my book away for free. And when, when the promoted book went back as a paid book, I had some serious inertia happening. I had some serious follow through after the promotion ended. I had a good solid five weeks of very good sales. Now they weren't as strong as they were in 2012 when I did the same type of promotion, but it lifted my sales up and put me where I uh, hadn't been able to get to with any discounted type promotion. The other offshoot that came from that, and, and this is a big number, uh, because of my free promotion, I picked up 50 new reviews 50, over the course of my five books. So that was a lot of reviews to pick up. At, at the time, the book that I was featuring, uh, My Temporary Life, had uh, uh, under 300 reviews, and now today it's got 330-something. So it, it, it gave me... it. it managed to, it, it helped me connect with readers the way I wasn't doing previous to that. So free isn't as effective as it, as it was. And it, I went through a period where it totally wasn't working for me at all. But now it seems to be. And having said that, you know, with any of these promotions, I've found whether it's a free promotion or a Kindle countdown promotion, it has to be uh, backed up with, a, with an ad. You've got you've to gotta have an ad somewhere. And we all know the sites that are most effective, and, and we know what they cost. And the more reach that the promotion site has, the more readers that you're going to connect with. So uh, you do need to, to pay a little bit of money to, to uh, promote your book. And it's kind of ironic. We're giving books away for free, and we're paying so that people know they can come and get our, our free books. But it, it does indeed work. Right. Yeah. So... How do you feel that the Amazon popularity lists are helping or hindering authors when they're doing those free or paid promotions? Well, they're certainly not hindering. Um, the popularity lists are where we all want to be, you know. So uh, when you're when you offer your book for free, it's it uh, calculates on the popularity list. So the popularity list, of course, you can see at the bottom of your product page. And uh, so I, I don't think they're hindering. I, I they help, you know. It's a way that uh, we can all compete on a relatively level playing field with the traditionally published authors. So, um, I, um, yeah, I think they're they're important. What's your take on Kindle Unlimited? Uh, is it good for authors? Is it bad for authors? What's your thoughts? It's been good for me. <laughs> it's been good for me. Uh, unfortunately, Amazon aren't showing the breakdown between Kindle Unlimited unit sales and. Uh, Kindle owner's lending library borrows, so I, I don't know what the breakdown is, but I can tell you that my my borrows slash KU units have gone through the roof uh, since Kindle Unlimited was was uh, was announced, um, and I I know it hasn't hurt my sales. My sales have gone up. Now my sales have gone up because my I I spun the spun the wheel and I hit the right promotions over the last six weeks. Uh, so my, my sales have gone up anyway, but my borrows have gone through the roof. There's been days when my borrows have been ridiculously high, and some days they've been higher than uh, than my sales. The the payout for the borrows or Kindle Unlimited units last month was $1.81. Um, hopefully that goes up a even a little bit more. Um, for $1.81 per, per unit to to have somebody exposed to my book, I think it's a great deal for authors. So it's been very good for me. 
So we talked a lot about the, the free uh, and bargain promotions, and, and those can be, for what you're seeing, is pretty effective. Maybe free not as effective, but maybe effective when you utilize a, a, somebody else's mailing list, so to speak, like those sites. So, But what other promotional uh, methods are you seeing working today? Kindle Countdown deals have been good for me. Um, Kindle Countdown deal uh, gives you the ability to give away your book for as low as 99 cents and uh, still retain a 70% royalty rate. So although the free was, was good for me, I won't do free on a consistent basis. Uh, I'll do free with, with a book maybe twice a year. So in my five books, I'll do free promotions twice a year. Uh, Kindle Countdown deals, I'm doing pretty well once a month with my books. Um, what I really need is more content so that I can do them more frequently. I'm doing a Kindle Countdown deal um, once a month. I'm promoting it on either BookBub, eReader News Today, or Kindle Books and Tips. Those are the three sites that are working for me. Now, now that doesn't mean that there aren't other sites that work. There's a lot of other sites that I that I um, support because I want to see them build up. I, I like the way that they're doing business, and they need to build up their subscriber base, and, and I want that to happen so that there's competition among the sites. So. I'm running Kindle Countdown deals. Um, I have another one actually coming up um, at the end of this month. Um, so I'm looking for great things from that. I've, I've promoted it through uh, eReader News Today and Kindle Books and Tips. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for great things. And Kindle Countdown deal has been great. It's, uh, it's a short period of time. I do it over three days, and it's worked out very well for me. Now, I don't get the, uh, the inertia or the follow-through from a Kindle Countdown deal that I did on the free promotions. With the Kindle Countdown deal, I'll get 7 to 10 days or where, of where my sales uh, are at a pretty steady level. Then they go back down to where they were before the promotion. Whereas with my free promotion, it was weeks uh, that I got after running the free promotion. Now, there may have been a number of factors uh, in there, too. Uh, Kindle Unlimited had just been announced, and, and I, I was doing very well with that, but um, I certainly would try try free again. So free and, and the Kindle Countdown deals are the, the main things that I'm using in terms of promoting my books. Gotcha. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you got 50 reviews from your free promotion. Are you asking for reviews at the back of your book, or did those just happen completely organically? Um, yeah, I do. I do ask for reviews. I, I ask if if, uh, if if you'd like to leave a re review, please leave a review. Um, all reviews, of course, uh, help uh, uh, divert eyeballs to our books. Any review, because it's it's showing that there's activity on our book. Hopefully, the majority of the reviews that we get are positive reviews, or else I have to go back and work at being a better writer, which I'm trying to do all the time, of course. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I do ask for reviews. Uh, if if I, I I found that Facebook is fantastic for connecting with readers, so if I have a reader contact me through Facebook, I, I say if it's not too much trouble, perhaps you could leave a review on, on Amazon.com. The 50 reviews that I got, I didn't have any, any program or, or blitz out there to try and get more reviews. It just kind of happened, and I was really surprised that that many have come in, and they're they're still coming in. I got a couple more today, so um, I don't know what happens. Sometimes the stars just line up, but you know what? I'll I'll take them. I'll take them. Hopefully, the five stars line up. You know what? The, fortunately, the majority of them were, but they're all. You know, if you pay the money, you can you can post the review. You know, and and everything is valuable. Yep. So you read them all, and you listen to what people have to say. Now you talked about more content would be good so that you can run more pr promotions. What do you have in the pipeline? Um, other than I've got the couple of Kindle countdown deals, I found that I'm I'm uh, I I speak now. I go out and talk to people and they listen and and sometimes they even give me a little bit of money to do that and they buy my books and and I'm having lots of fun doing that. So I have a couple of workshops coming up. I have uh, I have one. It, the, this is called the Rural Writers Retreat, and it's in northern British Columbia. I'm on the west coast of Canada, and it's a four-day uh, retreat in a lodge out in the middle of nowhere, and we're sequestered together. There's uh, myself and two other instructors and 30 
uh, 30 authors, and, and it's going to be all about writing. And I can't wait. I think it's going to be a really, the, the energy is going to be incredible in, in the lodge. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, during my workshops, I always do an in-progress promotion so that I can show the authors attending that it really does work. You know, it's fine for me to show screenshots and, and tell about great things that I've done, but I show them so they can follow along on their, on their computers and iPads and see that my book is indeed going off the charts, and I show them how many units I'm selling. So I have, I have the rural, rural Writers Retreat coming up, and then I'm opening the Whistler Writers Festival, which is kind of a big deal out here. And then in November, I have four other speaking engagements. So for the next couple of months, um, I'm pretty tied up. And actually, uh, December and January, I have some commitments too. So for the next few months, I'm going to rely on the Kindle Countdown deals, uh, the speaking engagements that I have. And I found that I, I really enjoy blogging. So I'm, I'm writing lots of blogs. I write a blog for... Indies Unlimited, which is a fantastic site for new authors, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. So I, I write at least once a month for them, and, and I update my, my own website and, and blog there. So uh, for the next little while, that's what my plans are. It sounds like you're keeping pretty busy. Uh, do you have uh, books underway, other projects uh, that you're uh, writing? Yeah, and I'm glad you asked that, because I made a mistake, and I'll... I'll, I'll I'll share this with you guys so that nobody has to make the same mistake. I um, Previously, when I was working on a project, I just crawled into the tunnel and got it done and worked and worked and worked and, and worked through it. Um, at the beginning of this year, or I guess towards the end of last year, I had uh, four different projects in mind that I wanted to write. And I, I talked to authors who would simultaneously work on different projects. So right now I have four projects that I'm working on, and I wish I hadn't done it. It's, it's, it's confusing, and there's too many overlays, and it's not working for me. So I'm currently working on the third book of my Temperate Life trilogy. I have uh, another couple of novels that I'm working on. And, uh, oh, I, I did have a completion. Pardon me. I just updated my, uh, or I revised the uh, 2014 edition of my self-publishing guidebook. So... Once I get through these projects, it will definitely be one at a time. That's all I can handle. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's a perfect segue. Uh, you talked about your book that you just updated. Could you explain what that book is and kind of when you, when you first wrote that book and kind of how it's evolved since then? Absolutely. Thanks for asking about that because it's been a really interesting process. I wrote my self-publishing guidebook and released it, um, I guess, towards the end of last year. And I was really happy with it because I, I felt I was given information that that um, wasn't out there. You know, as, as I said earlier, a lot of the the festivals I would attend had uh, companies selling author services that I didn't think were necessary. So, some authors would want to purchase those services, and that's great. But I wanted to show them how they could do a lot of these things by themselves and produce a, a professional product that would stand spine to virtual spine with any traditionally published book. So I released my book, I, I priced it as low as I could, it's, it's $4.99 for the ebook, and I got it out at the end of last year and it did really well. It went uh, to number one in its categories and, and I sold quite a few books and I was very happy with it. Uh, three months in, the world started changing. The self-publishing world started changing. And there were a number of different things that were going on. Kindle Countdown was introduced and, and a number of other things. So the content that, that I had in my book wasn't current. The philosophy that I use in, in terms of running your, your career in, a, in an honest, ethical manner, that will never change. But some of the content became dated really quickly. So I, I, I revised it. I did a quick revision and made some changes. There's a section in the back of my book uh, that has helpful links that has uh, everything from where you can find free photos for your covers and blogs to promotional sites that you can use, hundreds of, of different things that authors could could find handy. Um, and I updated that too because some new websites or some new promo sites had come onto the 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 uh, situation that I wanted to tell authors about. So I did a revision. I contacted Amazon. And they said, as long as the uh, information is, is uh, integral to the work, we'll, we'll let you change it. So they let me change it. 
and I alerted readers and, and let them know. So readers were able to go back and get the revised edition at no cost. So I did that uh, about three months into after I released my book. Well, then things kept changing, <laughs> and they all was well. So I, I started thinking, well, why couldn't I just keep doing this? Why couldn't I keep changing it? So as I was working on my other projects, I would, uh, I would start writing new chapters of, of the book that I wanted to get out there. So I did a, a total revision of the book. I added uh, 20,000 new words, which, as you guys know, that's quite substantial. I updated the helpful links section at the back, and I retitled the book. I titled it the the how I how I how I sold 30,000 ebooks on Amazon's Kindle, an easy to follow self publishing guidebook, 2014 edition. So I made all the changes. I uh, contacted Amazon again, and again Amazon, after a few emails back and forth, said, "Sure, we'll we'll let you change it." So uh, the content's been changed. Unfortunately, they won't. Uh, they won't alert uh, previous buyers that it has been changed, so I need to get the word out. So it's it's good that I'm able to do that right now. So now folks that have bought the book can go back and go to manage my Kindle and get the revised edition, and they'll have the most current information out there. And I'll continue to do that. Next year I'll do a 2015 edition, and, and I'll keep rolling with it. The basic philosophy, as I said, isn't going to change um, in order to... Uh, uh, produce a professional product, there's certain things that you have to do. But what's working and what isn't working is always going to change. So I'll keep, I'll continue to revise that and, and give it to people. So for $4.99, you're always going to have the most current information out there. That's great. And so you're obviously, is this a tactic of continually revising and adding more value to the, to the book? You know, something that you think that all nonfiction authors should be doing? Oh, I, I I don't know I don't know I, I with with the book that I wrote um, there's only certain things that need to be changed now some of that is substantial and and some of it's very important and some of it's lengthy but the the basic shell of the book I don't think will ever change because um, again we need to run our careers in an honest ethical manner and and that's how I present the book so. For me, for my project, uh, I, I, I'll just continue to revise it, and I kind of enjoy doing it. I'll, I'll give you an example. I have a friend who, who runs a real estate company, and he teaches new realtors from time to time. So every few months, it's, it's his turn to, to teach new realtors how to conduct themselves with, with their clients. And he says every time he, he does that, when he finishes, he's more successful because all the information that, that he knows that's inside, he's gotten out and he's passed on to these other people. And I think it's the same with my self-publishing book. I'm continually um, looking at the material and revising and seeing what's out there. So it's keeping me on my toes and it's making sure that I am indeed walking the walk too and doing the things that I'm, I'm suggesting to other authors to do. So it's good for me. It keeps, me, it keeps the business part of it um, fresh for me. Uh, while I'm writing. So for me, it, it certainly works. Now I'm going to switch gears entirely, uh, but talking about reviews, backing up a little bit, I noticed something that most of the time people would say you shouldn't comment about, but I noticed that you got a one-star review. And uh, the review is pretty inflammatory, you know, saying that the, this these five-star reviews were obvious plants, come on, at least make some of them look like they're real real reviews, but then you responded. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for asking that. And and usually I, I won't respond. Um, I, I responded to a, a couple, um, and I responded to that, that one in particular because it was an author who wrote uh, competing books. And mm. uh, so he, uh, he commented that he hadn't even finished the books and he felt that my uh, reviews were were uh, plants, and and that's one thing that uh, that I won't stand for. You know, he's he's in, insulting my name. If he insulted the content or the writing, go at it. You know, you pay the money, you can say whatever you like. And 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 if there is a, a, a comment on the writing or the content, I'm going to read it and I'm going to see just how valid it is. But he hadn't finished the book. He he read the sample. And uh, read my reviews, and he felt that the reviews were were uh, false. So in my response to him, I suggested that he contact some of the authors that had written the reviews, the 
the reviews were on my self-publishing guidebook, so I, I assumed that he knew some of the authors that had written the reviews, so I said, go ahead and contact the authors, and you'll see that they are indeed valid, and I was able to help some people. And uh, I said, also suggested that he read the whole book. You know, if, if you're going to comment on it and, and you don't think it's, it's worthwhile, read the book and then tell me, and by all means. But So I, I did respond to that one. I don't do it as a, as a rule, and I know that a lot of authors uh, won't do it at all, but that one I felt I had to. He was, he was insulting something that's, that's um, very important to me, and that's my integrity. So I did respond to it. Yeah, that seems to be a good way in which for authors to think about that, that those one stars that are against the content versus against the person. And what I, I found to be really cool was the number of people who responded uh, without you even soliciting to say, you know, I know this guy, he's, he's ethical, I know this guy, his writing is good, and he wouldn't even dare, you know, do these uh, paid reviews or trying to get somebody like uh, to, to do a paid review. So that was pretty cool. That was very nice. Yeah, I, I certainly appreciated that, and, and that just kind of happened, and hopefully everybody learned something from, from the little exercise. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything else? Uh, we mentioned the free and uh, Kindle Countdown deals. Are there any other promotional tactics that you're teaching other authors to do to just promote their books? No, I'm... You know, I'm happy to be uh, associated with Amazon and, and KDP Select, and and authors sometimes ask me why, you know, <coughs> why Amazon? Why not spread your work everywhere and and get out of KDP Select? And Amazon are the biggest, most innovative show in town. So I I want to be a part of that. And and the next time that a program comes along where you can uh, connect with thousands of readers, I want to be I want to be there and I want to be part of it. So. I'm hanging on to the, the Amazon uh, train and, and doing whatever comes up with them. Uh, the, um, the Kindle Countdown deals have worked very well. The free, as I said, is, is starting to work. And blogging is helping me connect with lots of readers. I've cut back on the, the social networking that I do. I, I'm kind of a reluctant uh, Twitterer. Um, I uh, do a little bit on LinkedIn. Um, and but Facebook is where I connect with readers. I, I have readers come and say hello on Facebook all the time. So I do put some work into Facebook, and I enjoy Facebook. I I enjoy connecting with people that way. So I don't think I'm doing anything revolutionary. I wish I had the the secret sauce to give you guys, but there really isn't one. You know, we as as you guys know, we you write a great book. You know, because we can promote all we want if if we if we don't have a great book that readers want to read, it, it's not going to work. So you write a great book, you 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 present it professionally, so your content has to be professional. I I hire a professional editor, I hire a formatter, I hire a cover designer so that my product looks great and, and is attracted to readers, and I keep trying to become a better writer. I, I came up with a system um, that I, I write about in my self-publishing guidebook on balance because when when we first talk about all these things, we've been talking about all these things we have to do to connect with readers and, and get our book out there. It's a lot. This is a lot of stuff. Um, so we need to maintain a balance so that we're writing more than we're doing non-writing type things. And I came up with a, a spreadsheet uh, over the last few months where I, I do a daily... Um, record of how much I, I rate. Now I'm I'm pretty lucky due to the the success of my books. I'm almost writing full time, so I can I can sit and have days and days and days where I'm just writing. So I committed to writing a thousand new words a day and revising at least three thousand new words a day, and I keep that up every day. And again, I'm lucky. I have the time to do that. Not everybody does, but even if you can commit to a hundred new words a day, it, it adds up pretty quick. So I have a, a spreadsheet because I love numbers and lists and uh, it's, a, it's a checklist for me so that I, I do my words every day. And In our house here, um, every evening uh, before we go to do something, I hear, have you done your words for today? So everybody knows that I need to get my words done um, before I can lay down at night. So. Balance is super important. So we, we've talked about all these other things, but it's really important to remember that 
everything we do is contingent on writing a great book. So I need to continually become, try to become a better writer and get more content out there too. So I'm a numbers guy, so I'm going to geek out a little bit about numbers and ask a question related to that. So what are some numbers in understanding that I don't know if most authors even think about numbers or what they're thinking about numbers, but what are some numbers that you're tracking that you're like, oh, I really like to understand this about my numbers and, and whatnot? Um, I don't know. I, um, I, I found, uh, uh, I'll give you an interesting little formula that I, I found that uh, there are some authors that, that come out with a new book and they'll run an initial promotion and their book will settle into that 8,000 to 12,000 overall ranking level, which is a great place to be. That's 15 to 30, 35 books a day. Uh, then they go write another book. And uh, I'm not able to do that. My books need a little help. Um, so I need to continually find ways to connect with the readers and, and run promotions. But I'm hopeful that one day I'll write a book and it'll either go right to the top and stay there or it'll find that little Amazon Bermuda Triangle where they it just sticks there. And uh, I have friends that, and they do nothing other than normal connections with readers through Twitter and Facebook and their book has just found that level and it stays there week after week, month after month. So um, I, I don't know that I track that. Well, I do. I watch some of my friends' book and books and every few days I check their rankings and I go, yeah, sure enough, it's still there. And sure enough, they're not doing anything with it. It's still just at their regular price. So I, I'd like to find a way to do that and it just kind of happens organically. But uh, So I'll, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and hope for the best, I guess. Yeah, I, I have a, a, a book under a pen name, and uh, it's as much as I try, and, and I haven't, I shouldn't say I try, I've tried here and there to promote it and whatnot. It sticks in the 20,000s, so anywhere between 20 and 25,000. It's been there for two years. That's and fantastic. I'm like, it's not bad, but I'm like, okay, what do I need to do <laughs> in order to get to that next, you know, even 15,000, I would be happy. So. Yeah. But it, it's you know what it's consistency, and if you can find consistency in in sales of your of your self published book, that's fantastic. You know that's what we're all yeah. looking for. So congratulations on that. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. RJ, you want to close this out then? Cool. So uh, it's only been three years, kind of since you started. But if you had to start over today, fresh, what would you make sure that that you did from the beginning? Um, I do a couple of things differently. I um, After my first book went crazy, um, I spent a lot of time promoting and looking for that secret sauce. And there isn't one. The only, the, the best thing that you can do to promote your books is write another great book. And I should have been focusing more on writing. I did get a lot of books out, but I think I could have got more out. You know, I certainly had the time. I had I had been able to quit my day job, so I had lots of time to write, and uh, I got uh, three books out last year, which I was really proud of, but I think previous to that I could have got a little bit more product out. Also, I, um, my first book was very successful, and uh, I'd, I'd intended to move on to another project, but readers started uh, asking me lots about what happened after the story and, and about other characters in the book, so I decided to turn it into a trilogy. So I wrote book two in the trilogy. It did very well, too. I, I've yet to write book three. I'm working on book three. So if I were to do it again, I would turn it into a series and not a trilogy. Now what happens when people buy um, the first two books in the trilogy? They want the third one. They want the story, the story concluded. And uh, it's still concluding in my head, unfortunately. So I'm a really lucky guy. I get emails all the time asking me where the th third book is and when it's going to be finished. So... If I had to do it again, I would have turned that into a series, and then I can set my own pace in terms of when I'm going to finish it. As it is, there's a little bit of pressure to get that book out, which is great pressure. It's what we always wanted. We wanted people asking for our work, so now I have that. But if I had to do it again, I'd, I'd make it a series and not a trilogy, and I'd, I'd keep writing more. Just keep writing and, and continue trying to become a better reader and, and or sorry, writer, and get books out to my readers. 
That's great. Well, Martin, uh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you being on the show. Uh, where can people find you and connect with you? And thanks for having me, uh, Sean and, and RJ, too. Um, my website is uh, martincrosby.com, and uh, Crosby is C-R-O-S-B-I-E. Uh, or you can email me at martin at martincrosby.com. Those are the easiest ways. On my website, I have an author's tools tab that uh, authors might hi find handy. And it's got uh, lists of hundreds of promotional sites, places where you can submit your books for review, uh, places where you can uh, uh, get free photos for your blogs and so forth. So that might be somewhere that, that you want to check out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, it's been great. and uh, Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And I will say that that author's tool page that you have, uh, martincrosby.com, uh, for author's tool it's really good. It has a lot of good information, thank so uh, I definitely recommend that. So uh, thank you, and uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for joining the Author Hangout. I'm Sean Matnaher here with RJ Adams. We'll see you at the next one. Are you confused about what you should be doing to promote your book? Luckily for you, our Ultimate Author Checklist is here to help. We walk you step-by-step step through building your book marketing engine so you can actively and passively sell more books. Go to theauthorhangout.com slash free guide to get our free ultimate author checklist.